What do you do when you want to go faster? You add more downforce. Today's video is about adding a gurney flap to the wing of my MX-5 track car here. What is a gurney flap you ask? Well, why are you asking me? I'm not a smart person. Just pause this video and go and Google Dan Gurney. I'll wait. Okay, if you say so. Ah, now I know everything. Hi, welcome back. All right, so adding a gurney flap is pretty straightforward. As you've, as you've just learned, it's effectively, in general, a piece of 90 degree angle attached to the trailing edge of the wing on a car, usually a car. I'm sure it's applicable to other things that use wing type stuff, but yeah, we're doing it on a car. Um, initially, when I was looking at doing this, it was like, okay, let's just go to the aluminium metal supply place and buy some smallish sized aluminium angle, but I ended up finding some carbon fiber. Ooh. Uh, this was a little bit tricky to source, however, and originally I couldn't get carbon fiber angle, at least not for a reasonable price. So I ended up buying box tube, aluminium, bo uh, aluminium carbon fiber box tube and cutting it to make it angles. Let me show you how I did that. Now maybe I'm getting rusty at Googling, but I struggled to find carbon fiber in a sort of an angled shape. So I bought this 15 millimeter carbon fiber box tube. Um, and then I cut it into two pieces. Now, obviously at first that might sound a bit hard or fiddly, but I ended up coming up with a reasonably okay solution on how to cut these into two pieces. Effectively, you take your box or your square, and I'll try and give you a close up of what that kind of looks like. It's not gonna focus because it's a little bit tricky, but you get the gist, right? Um, and then I cut down one corner and down one corner and that turns into two right angled pieces. Uh, I used a small router, mounted it upside down, uh, secured to my vise, ran a vacuum into the thing so that I wasn't making too much carbon dust everywhere, and then added a fence to the router. So that way, effectively, I could just trim an exact amount off this at a fairly consistent and straight angle and a straight line on both sides and end up with two pieces. Worked great. The other thing was to buy a full length, so the wing is, I don't know, 1.8 meters maybe not quite that long. Um, and you don't want to say buy a full two meter length of tube or even a one meter length of tube. Or you would, I would if I could, but I couldn't. So these are, I think 500, perhaps 500 mil long. So cutting it into two gives me a one length piece. So I bought two box boxes, alloy, uh, carbon boxes, cut them all. Now I've got four, four 500 mil lengths. Perfect. Now, I guess not perfect, the perfect solution would be to have a single long solid piece. Anyway, we're gonna make do. We're just gonna have small joins, but they'll be um, insignificant once. Hopefully this is all glued down. And that's the next part, I suppose. I've got the carbon, I've got to glue it down. Now, in terms of how you work with carbon, you gotta be careful. I used a vacuum to try and capture as much of the dust as I could. When I was cutting it, I wore a mask, I wore earmuffs because the uh, the router is noisy. Um, and then I finish these with a file, just a hand file, nothing special, just to bring down any, bring down any burrs and smooth out any uneven cut lines and things. Um, but while I was doing that, I wore gloves because you don't want carbon dust everywhere. I'll bring you over here and I'll show you. So this is the router setup. So you can see just a small bit in there and effectively a square straight edge for it to cut and it's just cutting a small notch out of the corner of the box to get two angled pieces. So that worked well and then just some dodgy masking tape to attach the uh, end of the vacuum to that to suck up the dust. And then this is all my filing dust, pretty grotty stuff. You would not want this on your hands, in your eyes, down your lungs. Hence why I was wearing the gloves. I was use actually using the, the towel just now to wipe these down of any remaining dust because I do not want carbon dust on me, it just sticks to your skin and gets itchy and it's really unpleasant. So that's sort of how I got to this point. I've got now four sections of 500 mil long carbon angle. 
They now need to go onto the car. Now I've laid out my first three sections of carbon and they stretch almost the full length of the wing. I'm going to need this fourth piece and cut about, I don't know, 150 mil off the end. It's only going to need about that much to fill the last piece. So, okay, again, not ideal to have it in multiple pieces, but you work with what you got and I'm cheap. Now, to be fair, I'll put how, mu how much this carbon cost me somewhere up here. It wasn't that expensive delivered to my door. Um, definitely not as cheap as buying aluminium, but not that bad and a lot cheaper than anything else I could find online. So the little bit of extra effort in terms of using shorter pieces and stuff I had to cut was worth the, the cost saving. Um, if you want to buy the stuff, links in the description somewhere. And yeah, the price is there. It wasn't that bad. So we're going to glue this stuff on now. I'm going to use Sikaflex. I'll find the high strength Sikaflex stuff out of my drawer over there and we'll just get gluing. All right, so I've got my glue, got my carbon ready to go. Got some acetone on the floor just in case things get messy. Gloves on because this stuff is messy and some paper towel over there in case I need it. I've given this edge a wipe down with some of that acetone and I'm going to apply the glue as fairly thinly as I can along the carbon. I think that'll be easier to get a cleaner result. I'm kind of being not generous. What's the opposite of generous? Stingy with uh, my glue application because I don't want too much. I really just want a thin smear. We're not trying to seal our gap here. We're trying to glue the things together. Um, I should use the Sigaflex 252, which is like the real hardcore automotive grade stuff. This is more like a sealant adhesive because it's the Sigaflex, whatever it is, 11 or something. But anyway, I didn't want to open a brand new jar of two or, or tube of 252 just for this job. So just line it up with the back of the wing. And I'm going to have to press down as kind of hard as I can. And you can see why I got to wear gloves because immediately I'm getting squeeze out on my fingers. So this is going to make a mess. Grab my rag. Bit of acetone on the on said rag and I'm just going to wipe this back edge. It wasn't too much squeeze out actually. There's probably a little bit tight on the glue. I don't know, hopefully that was enough. There isn't a whole lot of squeeze out along here, just a few spots here and there. I'm not gonna touch it. It's gonna be too hard to wipe, I think. Maybe I'll scrape it up later with a blade. Let's move on to the next piece of angle. Kinda wanna do this fairly quickly. I don't wanna take forever. Line it up again with the back edge of the wing. When you're doing this sort of stuff, it's handy to kind of push down, but also kind of jiggle back and forth. It, it's probably like laying tiles, not that I'm a bathroom tiler, but you, you kind of get the glue in and get them kind of, I don't know. The glue gets in there, you know what I'm saying? Again, with the acetone, need a bit more this time. Made more of a mess. Uh, this time I'm probably gonna need a new rag. Oh no, here's a clean spot. And we do need to wipe this side because I've made a mess with my fingers. It's one of the challenges of um, using this stuff is you touch things and it gets everywhere. Well, that glue up all went pretty good. Um, Overall, not too messy. I probably got just about the right amount of glue on there. Thankfully, as I mentioned, this stuff is black, so it kind of blends in. If that was like a white wing, you'd see big black streaky messes all over the wing, but um, it all blends in, so it's 
kind of hidden. You can see I had to clamp down one section. It was a little bit wavery. The, the wing must have been cut not 100% perfect or something, or it's perhaps warped with weather and time. Uh, so a couple of bits of timber for some spaces and those springy clamps, and yeah, that's sorted. I'd like to have more clamps along there, like 10, and then everything's really squished down, but I've only got the two clamps, so work with what you got. Um, other than that, it all looks pretty good. It's all lined up okay. Um, I need to give it some time now to glue and then we can wrap it up. Is this going to work out on track? Is my wing going to make more downforces? In theory, yes. You watched the Dan Gurney Googles, so it's told you that this is supposed to make your wing gooder. Will it be for me? Look, I'm not a good enough driver to be able to measure such an insignificant thing. I'm so stressed about trying to drive the car as it is. This one small insignificant change isn't going to be obviously perceptible to me. I'm not that attuned to driving, unless of course it somehow like drops my lap times by three seconds. Even if it does that, I probably won't realize. I'll just be going around the track driving as fast as I can and then look down and go, oh, where'd that three seconds come from? Small changes like this are kind of iterative. You do a hundred small changes and eventually you, you find time gained. Doing one little small thing like this isn't going to make, well, for a pleb like I, it is not going to make a significant enough change that I'll be able to, I guess, obviously detect the difference. Um, but we do these things as well as many other things so that hopefully as a whole, we get a benefit of a faster car. You, sorry for the spiel. All right, I'll catch you in a minute once this is glued. Rightio, glue's all set now. Gurney flap done. Uh, took the wing end plate off just for dramatic effect so we can kind of have a bit of a better look at the profile and honestly, uh, I'm quite happy with how this one's turned out. The carbon fiber strips have gone on really quite nice. Um, the effort it took to cut them wasn't that big of a drama once I worked out that I could use the router to trim them down nice and straight. Uh, having multiple segments really didn't cause any issue here other than just, it was actually probably better, it was easier to work with, you can kind of glue small bits at once rather than one big long strip. And now that they're glued down, they all sit flush to one another. You'd never know really unless someone told you. And it's not going to affect the, the way it performs. It's, it's going to perform a gurney flap as a gurney flap, perfectly fine, although there are multiple pieces to it. Glue set up nice and hard. I can't see that coming away unless someone pulls it off. It's definitely not going to come away even at speed. So overall, seems like a good result. I'm no aerodynamicist, I'm no engineer. I can't guarantee this is going to make the car faster or better or anything, but you know, I'm giving things a go here. Uh, and hopefully this is proof that if this is something you're considering for your car, I can do it, so, so can you, and at a fairly low cost. If you want to do, to do this super cheap, go and find your sort of aluminium wholesaler, get a, like a six meter length of aluminium angle, trim it to the width of your wing, and it would honestly cost you maybe 10 bucks in parts. This carbon was closer to about $50 or so, which is still pretty low. Now, of course, proof in the pudding in actually driving the thing and seeing there's a difference. I'm no expert driver here, so I can't guarantee I'm actually gonna notice a real difference to the car. It's such a minuscule change. I don't think I'm going to be like, oh my God, the car's so dramatically different. But nonetheless, we'll see what happens out on track. Um, when that happens, hopefully soon, if I get a chance to get the car out on track before I put this video online, here's some footage of me driving.
Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Go and stick a gurney flap on your car.